Yeah, actually, when Edgar was on the episode, we were talking that we only see the W's on social media. Yeah. We only see like people with six packs or like right. physical fitness or like yeah. maybe you see like a, a little reel or a video of them doing a few reps at a machine, right? But like <clears throat> to actually like grind on diet and exercise is it's pretty much like seven days a week. Yeah. Like, granted, what you were saying in the 80 20 rule, it's like 80% of the time you can eat good mm-hmm. and then the other 20% you could just say fuck it, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's the same with like working out too. I mean, you can work out like five days a week and be off the other two. You know, I think most of the people that voted on the Instagram post I did when I asked about topics and episodes, they asked for diet and exercise. And I feel like they were looking for not like us to lay out a fucking plan for them. Right. You know, we're not personal trainers or nutritionists or shit like that. Not certified. Yeah. No, but we we just like kind of like share some knowledge spread some tips of just what what that journey's looked like for us so to speak right right okay i can't say that i'm perfect you know there's some yeah. there's some weeks that i only really work out twice a week right whether i'm just you know feeling down or whatnot i still deal with like mental health issues and shit like that but then the following week i'll hit it five six days a week as long as you can if you have an off week that's fine. Right. Get back to it the next week. Yeah. You know, uh, with the eating thing, what I would like to tell <clears throat> any of the listeners, like, I think people really undervalue how important it is to not eat two hours before you go to bed. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you like slam food, whatever it is, and then you pass out, like your body is using the sleep in order to repair the brain right. that's been working all day. Not only the brain, but it's like if you, let's just say you had a hard workout that day, hit the gym hard, maybe you walked on the treadmill to incline, you know, you you, you did some good activity that day. Your body <clears throat> needs that sleep to recover, right? So it's like, I think in today's world that we live in, it's like, man, you got TVs everywhere with screens on them, with food commercials up the wazoo. It's the worst shit ever, especially if you watch like cable TV and it's like, okay, you know, it's 10, 11 PM. I'm winding down, man, but I'm a little bit hungry. Like I could, I could eat a little bit. And then you, you know, dip into the pantry and, and get a snack. And it's like, all of a sudden, like as you go to bed, your body's spending the time digesting the food while you're sleeping versus like the repairs and the recovery it needs, right? Like that brain function, like you said, the muscle recovery, just all those like daily, like rep like repairs that it needs to do during sleep is halted because like it's digesting food that you just put slam down right. right before bed right so yeah i would say that's such a huge thing is try try to at least like not eat like three hours before bed is what a lot of doctors recommend that makes sense mm-hmm. <laughs> we were just we were joking the other day because Eric's like, you can't tell me that slamming a big bowl of pasta and then passing the <laughs> fuck out doesn't feel great. And I'm like, yeah, it, yeah. It, it does feel great. Yeah. But uh, just get that massive glucose spike and you're like, all right. And then you pass now out. Now I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah. You but know? then, you know, you don't wake up the best. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. You're going to feel a little drowsy and and, and not 100% for sure. But when, when you said the listeners want to talk about just like fitness, um, nutrition, right? It's like... I think the biggest starting point for that conversation is like everybody's going to be at a different point in their life and a different journey and a different like they're going to have different goals and aspirations, right? You you might just be just starting off with your fitness journey or nutrition journey. You really want to make these changes. You might be somebody who's a little more experienced who has built in routines and habits and stuff like that, right? But I think the biggest thing to understand is wherever you are at in your journey, it's like you need to understand what your goals and and, and what you're trying to achieve is, right? Because if you don't have something to attach to it, it's really hard to consistently develop like good, strong foundational habits and routines if you don't have like something that you're striving for, right? Maybe it's like, I just want to have a six pack and look really good because it's going to help with my self-image. Like, cool. If that's what you want, go for it. Right. Maybe it's like, you know what, when I first started working out, I loved the way that I felt mentally. My energy levels were great. All my relationships with everybody. I just had like this like glow about me. Right. 
that's what I want out of my my journey. And it's like, cool, go get that. Right. So it's like I think that's for me one of the most important things that that I've done to like, you know, really change my life around. It's like, okay, I want to be like a really dope, good ass runner. And I love the way it makes me feel like I've literally turned my whole life around from it. So it's like, okay, I'm going to strive to be the best runner that I could be. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, put the work in each and every day to like, you know, get there. So, you know, like just starting off like that, you've got to have a goal. You have to have aspirations, something like that you can objectify to like, like tangibly see in your mind to get to like pull you there. Right. I think it's important to have that visualization and goal and and stick to it, but also learn when you need to change it. Like Absolutely. You got to be able to pivot. And, you know, I think that nothing should be like totally concrete and set in stone. Like we look at it, like everything moves so fast today. And, you know, all these big companies, they don't just like plan years out. And then like we have to stick to this product that we're releasing. Like this is this is what we're doing, right? And it's like, oh, we found out some new information. This is what the users want. Like, let's change course, just like your dreams and aspirations. Like, you've got to be able to, like, assess at different points along the way. And you've got to be able to pivot and change course, like, depending on what the circumstances are or just, like, the information that's, you know, newly presented to you and, and whatever that is. Right. I think it's important to note that for a long time, my – my fitness visualization was totally and only reliant on, I want to be a better basketball player. Right. <clears throat> yeah. But I didn't take that visualization seriously because in the last three years, whenever I would get hurt, I would completely stop everything. Right. I would stop going to the gym. I'm like, I can't do shit. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I don't work out for two months. Right. Yeah. I just learned a month ago when I got hurt though, that, okay, I just can't do cardio or I can't run and I can't do calf raises. Mm -hmm. I can literally do any other workout. Right. Honestly. Yeah. Obviously the first few days, like I can't do the leg press, you know, just in case I bend down too far, I could still do chest. I could still do arms. I could still ride a stationary bike. And I stayed in relatively good shape a month ago when I hurt my ankle and, you know, I was back at it again. And then I, you know, hurt myself yeah. four days ago, but I've slowly started to understand that, my fitness journey isn't based around, I just want to be a better basketball player. Mm -hmm. Now I've kind of solidified it in the last few months, realizing that I need to be in better shape and healthy because it affects my mental health. Mm -hmm. It affects my creativity. Right. It affects my relationships. It affects mm -hmm. who I am. I don't, it doesn't have to be based in me being a better basketball player, right. but staying consistent with working out and being physically active affects every other aspect of my life. Yeah, I was, I mean, I totally resonate and feel that. I was listening to a podcast the other day and um, this doctor was on and she asked the the host of the podcast, she's like, so what do you think is um, more important or what do you think like, would you try and like um, focus on first? Would you focus on like your mental like health and your mind or would you focus on like the physical body and like physical like strength and this that and other right and he's like 100 percent like the physical aspect you know like we have a massive mental health problem in this country even in, you know worldwide right mm -hmm. especially you know um post you know covid pandemic and it's really hard to fix mental problems and like mental illness by just like sitting stationary and just talking about it and letting your mind wander and, and just like therapy is great and all and there's definitely uses for it but it's like the mind body connection is so powerful and if you cannot physically like build yourself up the mental side of it is just going to eat away at you it's so hard to heal the mind when the body is just stationary and not moving you know i'm a huge proponent to like exercise movement just get yourself moving every day a little bit right and i'm telling you like it'll fuel the mind like it's no one's business you'll feel this mental clarity and this just like sharpness come about you when you get into a consistent habit of physically building up your body and just a little bit of movement every day so i thought that was a really cool thing on the podcast and I forgot exactly how it went, the back and forth, but, um, you know, eventually they kind of came to an understanding, like, you know what, I think you're right. I would definitely start with the physical side of things, building that up in the mental, 
what you find in the mental journey then is, wow, I've actually built up like habits and I've actually created discipline in my life through building up my physical body. And all of a sudden, those mental things that I was struggling with seem like second fiddle to like this newfound power that I have where I have created like consistency and discipline in my life. You right. Know? So, I mean, it's not like completely undermining like therapy or like right, good mental health. Yeah. Practices. Cause there is use for that and it's definitely very much needed. You for know? sure. Yeah. I think like you said, like sitting and talking about things is, is one thing, yeah. but when you look at the state of the country in general, like a lot of people struggle with diet and exercise yeah. and I'm not, I don't even like using the word diet anymore. It's like people, we have an issue with the food and substances we consume mm -hmm. and how often we're getting active. Right. So we've talked about how this journey has affected us and what it means to us. And I know that there are people out there who are like, okay, well, well where do I start? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, like you said, the first thing to do is to visualize like, what do you want out of this? Right. Are you doing this because you want to feel better? Yeah. Are you doing this because you want to look better? Are you are you tired of not having any energy? Right. Are you tired lack of motivation, lack of just like right. discipline in your life? You just feel like you're going through the motions or you just feel like almost like this fog over your head where it's like, man, every day just seems like a struggle for me to get through. And I don't have I'm low energy. I have, you know, all these like underlying issues that just can't seem to be resolved, you know, and it's right. like, okay, like that's, that's what you're striving to fix through exercise and, and, um, in the, the lifestyle that you're going to like undertake. Right. And a lot of it starts with the food that you're putting into your body. I know, um, you know, for me, it's like I used to eat a shitload of fast food. Like I'm talking probably like four days a week, you know, and growing up, like, you know, it was like we would eat like it was no one's business. And I remember like it just didn't feel right to me. You know, I'm like this 13 year old boy. I'm like, fuck this just like something's off with this stuff, man. Like <laughs> my body should not be taking this in. And I remember in like seventh grade, I'm like, all right, I'm going to like go like a full year without fast food. Everyone thought I was fucking crazy, right. you know, and I'm just like, it just doesn't, it's not sitting right with me, you know? And just from that young age, I'm like, wow, I can't believe like the clear mind and the clarity I have just from cutting that shit out, you know? And yeah, you um, did soda too. Yeah, like, and, yeah, and soda, cut soda out and um, fast food, you know, at like the age of like 13 or something like that. <laughs> and yeah, it was amazing just like the transformation I felt, you know. So um, when it comes to like actual like the nutrition and the fuel that we feed our bodies with, it's like there's just so much research being poured into it nowadays because of like all this processed garbage that you know a lot of our society's eating and just like this, this caked up stuff where it's all disguised as yeah just you know put this in your body like marketing is just like flooding you know the food industry with all these like terrible terrible things for for the human body and um like i think one of the biggest things that is really starting to come to light is just the negative um, connotation that seed oils are starting to get, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, there's so many direct links and correlations to like heart disease and um, obesity, you know, based on these seed oils, uh, you know, all the canola oils, the vegetable oils, like all this stuff, right? And you see it in just like a lot of stuff on the shelves, right? I was looking at this um, Kraft Mayo, like by Kraft, the company is like a jar of mayo, mayonnaise on the shelf the other day. And it said made with like olive oil right on the front. It's like, oh, perfect. And you look at the back and it's got all these seed oils on it. Like uh, the first three ingredients are like soybean oil, canola oil, vegetable oil. It's like, like, so you could just slap this olive oil logo on it, but then it's made with all this shit. All so, the other oil. Yeah. Um, it's pretty crazy when, when you actually look at like all the, like the um, nasty stuff out there and like what's like actually fueling most of our bodies in, in modern society. And it's like, man, we're just like running on complete empty, right? And like outside and we can get back to like the physical aspect of things and like, you know, the exercise, but you know, um, the fuel that, that we're fueling our bodies with is just like um, 
one of the most just like disgusting things in all of human history i think like we're at a point where it's just like this is like grotesque what's what's actually out there and what what most people are actually eating um you know what's odd i don't think i've mentioned this on this podcast people have mentioned it on their podcast but if you look back throughout time you see that there's always a difference between like the upper ruling class or those with money and then those without money and resources, right? And yeah. for all of time, it was always that the larger humans were the richer ones, right? Because they had more food, they had more resources. right? And then the ones who were poor or had less money and resources, I'm mostly just talking about here in America, and they were skinnier, right? They just didn't have a lot of food or money, right? It's kind of flipped now. Right. Because now the the wealthy have the money and the resources and the time in order to eat healthier. Yeah. And they have more information about the food that's out there, right? Right. And those with less are purchasing on just convenience sake. Yeah. It's fast. It's here. It right. tastes good. It's cheap. It's cheap. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that's kind of like piggybacking on your whole like it's one of the most disgusting things in human history right. is the food nowadays. Yeah. And I agree with that. You know, and I, you know, I, I'm i not perfect. Like I said, you know, right. I'll, I'll still go and eat like Mexican food or like I like a beef sandwich. You know, you eat pizza sometimes, right? right. But that, that whole 80-20 rule is really important. Like most of the time, if you're feeling snacky and you want like something sweet, just eat fruit. Absolutely. Like, like people want to yeah. eat like chips, cookies, and right. cake, and it's like all this like ultra processed garbage. Right. Where it's like um, in the moment, it's gonna like have this insane dopamine rush. Where like, holy shit, this is the best food I've ever had. Like the taste is like you know godlike, and then it's like, but what did it actually? do to like nourish my body like absolutely nothing right right like literally like you're gonna feel worse than you did before in about like an hour and a half two hours um so it's like in in it's weird because it's like a balance where it's like okay so like how strict do i want to be um because then some people look at it and they're like oh my gosh like I'm scared to actually like venture into like changing the lifestyle and the food that I intake because I can't do zero to a hundred. I can't just like cut all this stuff out that gives me joy and pleasure because um, sugar is one of the most addictive things, chemicals on the earth, right? So it's like, I'm just not going to make any changes because I can't do that and I don't want to give that stuff up. And it's like, I think that there's got to be a balance that's created and it's like there has to be a starting point, right? Like, you know, I'm somebody who personally likes to do zero to a hundred right, things. Right. Like if you give, provide me like new information or you provide me a different way of doing things and that, that I'm currently doing it and um, it makes sense to me, then I'm just going to change course and absolutely go all in to do that. I don't need to like this buffer point or I don't need to like kind of be half in half out on something it's like yeah zero to 100 for me but a lot of people aren't like that so it's like what i would suggest is just like make small changes you know like okay how can i like make one small change today to like what i'm eating and incorporate that you know moving forward to so it's like okay so instead of like having maybe um a peanut butter and jelly sandwich which um has a lot of you know processed sugar refined carbs in it from the bread and all that it's like maybe i could have like um some grilled chicken or something like that right for me right. personally it's always beef all beef like I, I think it's just pound for pound the best but it's like some type of good protein source whether it's you know chicken beef some type of fish maybe you could even do um and make that change right um so it's like that's that's what I would say is like, OK, maybe you're not going to like do it all and go all in and completely like revolutionize and change, you know, your lifestyle of food you eat. But even if it's like one small change and add that and then make another small change and then start to like really do your own research and do your due diligence and like what's what's the most beneficial thing for me, right? A lot of people don't get enough protein in their diet on a daily basis. Protein is such an important macro that like, you know, you should be getting at least your body weight in grams per day of protein. And I would say, I don't know what the like stats are, but man, I would say like probably more than like 
60, 70% of Americans don't get that. It's like if you weigh 200 pounds, like 200 grams of protein is pretty tough to get. Yeah, if you're eating a lot of just processed food, if you're eating fast food like once a day and you're eating just like a bunch of like, you know, refined carbs, like there's no way you're getting anywhere close to 200 grams of no. protein, right? And that's when your muscles don't have the required nutrients right. in order to build themselves. Yeah. I think finding, like you said, small changes to stick to, like maybe just start eating a little more fruit each right. week um, and changing out some of the the sweet snacks that you fill your cupboard yeah. and stuff with. More just whole natural foods. I, right. That's I, like the biggest change is like if you could just cut out a lot like of processed food and it's like okay is this like food found in its natural state how it is no it's not okay probably shouldn't be eating it then right and it's like once you start like taking stock of that then it's like oh wow it's actually really easy to like really make a, a, a quick change all of a sudden i'm eating a lot of fruits and i'm not a big vegetable person but vegetables right salad like lettuce stuff like that like not my cup of tea but hey if that's what you like go for it right Maybe just don't do any dressing on it. Like put some lemon juice. Um, you know, so it's like, okay, less processed food, more whole natural food. Make that switch and like instant like change in your life, your whole mindset and, and just like the way your body feels on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. So prioritizing more whole foods, less processed foods. That's one thing. Second thing I want to say, and this is crazy because – Mom looks at me like I'm fucking crazy when I say that. So does dad and uh, Uncle Danny and stuff. And it's like, you could just like fast a little bit. Like when you start telling people you don't always have to snack, like you were saying earlier in the episode, like there's literally commercials about food everywhere. Right. They're trying to make us feel hungry all the time. Yeah. If if you're not going to make a whole bunch of zero to 100 changes like, like we do because – you know, I'm an addict, you know, you had a problem with drinking, like the zero right. to a hundred lifestyle definitely lives more in addicts than normal people. Right. Right. If you're going to, if you're going to make one change, I think it would just be to look at yourself from the third person when you're feeling hungry, mm -hmm. try and curb your appetite, try and almost tell yourself that you're not always hungry all the time. Right. Because people, we wake up and we're like in survival mode as humans, like we got to eat, yep. you know, but the problem is like, they're literally telling us to eat all the fucking time. Yeah. Like even two hours after like a really big meal, you see something like, yeah, I could go for some of that. I'll snack on that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I'll snack right. a little bit on that. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is like, okay, just understanding what it actually is that's making you hungry, right? It's these ads, it's the TV, it's just like boredom a lot of the time, right? And it's like, <laughs> okay, all it is is like a chemical response in your body to tell your mind it's time to eat. So it's like, and I've done a lot of like fasting over the past probably, what, three years now. And I've kind of like went away from it just because I don't really need to fast too much anymore, especially with like running a lot. I just like need a good amount of food and nutrition in me. Um, but when I did do a lot of fasting, it was like, okay, um, typically those urges and those sensations will last anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes maybe even less sometimes, maybe like five minutes, right? When you can actually sit down and feel comfortable with yourself and like really like work through the emotion, work through that chemical response that's happening in your body that's making you hungry and understand that you're really not actually that hungry. It's just like a natural response that the body's like making because there's some type of like stimulation that's in, eliciting input. it, right? Yeah. Whether it's like a, some type of marketing or ad, right? So once you can actually internalize that and like come to an understanding of, okay, I'm actually not hungry. Like this is insane. I just ate fucking two hours ago. Um, then uh, you can work through that and it becomes a lot easier to fight those urges and and actually not eat. So, right. if, you know, just understanding it for what it is, right? It does take some training though too. Absolutely. Because yeah. I mean, had to do the same thing we're getting off of nicotine. It's like every five, it's like five minutes I'd have an urge to smoke. Right. The urge would last like five minutes and I'm like, I should hop in my car, yeah. go to the gas station and get a cigar right. or some yeah. shit, you know? And you get through the five minutes and you're like, ah, I think I'm all right. You yeah. Know? I think I'm good. In yeah. the moment, though, when I was really struggling with that, it was just like, you're always telling yourself you'll change after, right? And then That's the toughest thing. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, let me just do it this time and then I'll figure it out and like, you know, 
we'll we'll probably stop next time right like, you know you, yeah. and you create this loop in your head right you know and it's fucking vicious i think so aside from like the the food part finding small things to do for physical activity as well yeah, like, absolutely coupling that with with it is just you know vitally important there was this uh i was uh, telling sarah about this last night I, and i don't know the exact number so i'm not going to quote it but there was a study i was um i was uh i forgot if i was listening or i was actually reading it it was something though but it was like um dementia is a huge problem in today's society it's it's kind of being coined as type 3 diabetes right because there's a lot of like understanding starting to to come to light of like diet and exercise has a, is like a key contributor into dementia and Alzheimer's, right? Especially when you just look at like we were just talking about with all the, you know, shit food out there nowadays. So um, the study showed that if you can walk for 45 minutes a day for three days a week, it'll decrease your chance of developing dementia by um, some crazy percentage. I think it was like almost over 50% or something like that, right? Yeah. And um, when I was telling Sarah this, I'm like, man, like, isn't that crazy that like, just something as simple as that, going for a walk for 45 minutes in a day, three days a week, like just three days a week, is that, that's crazy to me, right? And then I'm thinking, I'm like, so why is like dementia running so rampant here in the US? It's like, oh, because people just don't exercise like at all. Yeah. like. Like imagine like if you like did moderate exercise in your teenage years and your early 20s or something like that. And then you get a job because you went to college and you're kind of like set up. It's the whole like American dream type thing. You have a family, you have kids, you start to work up the corporate ladder, whatever that is. Um, grandkids come into the picture then. And all of a sudden you're nearing the age of retirement and you look back and you're like, I haven't exercised in 30 plus years. I haven't done any physical activity in over 30 years. And it's like, man, I feel like that's just such a common thing in, in today's society because it's not really talked about much. The importance of exercise, the importance of, of like what it is to like physically move your body. Like we're creatures of movement, you know, like right. we need to move. And yeah, I just think that like just starting at a place like that, like, will really start to repair a lot of the damage done to our society over the past, you know, four, five, six decades, whatever it's been. The amount of sugar people eat and not exercising is huge. It's just like the lack of like really like speaking to it, right? Like there's like this hustle culture now and there's this corporate grind and there's just like this, this stigma of like, you know, Money. You have to like, yeah, you money. need money to do all these things. You need like this, this and this. And it's like, don't worry about your own health and your own like, um, like personal right ambitions. Right now, worry you know? about your health later. Right. And it's like, I think that's just so ass backwards. It's just <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, how are you ever supposed to like actually be worth something to your own self if you can't like truly like discover what it is to like develop a consistent like habit in in exercise and in, in your lifestyle and the nutrition I mean, that you, you you choose to partake in. It's just respecting and loving yourself though. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't right. think that money and things and status will ever do that. No. You know, people think that right. because it's glamorized through mass yeah. media and shit like that. Especially if you follow like anything in the entertainment industry, right? You see that and you're like, oh, I want that, right? Because the human mind like sees something and it has curb appeal and it's like, that like willful desire starts to like churn where it's like, oh yeah, that, that would be nice. Like I want that. And maybe you can't settle for something like that, but you settle for something lower than that. And then all of a sudden, like your whole like persona and demeanor and everything you're attributing your life to is just like this, like almost like false satisfaction of like, like, in, like inflated gratification, just like, like it's, it, does, it doesn't have any weight or sustenance to it. No. Yeah. Well, we were talking about this on the other episode. Like sometimes we live in imaginary daydream land like right. I do. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Or it's like me in the future that acted on this idea. Yeah. Right. And I envision myself and I feel you can feel your thoughts. You can feel that daydream. You're like, right. oh, I already did it right. in my head yeah. 10 months from now. And I'm like, all right, that's enough work for today. Yeah. You know, no one really wants to like put in the work to get there. And yeah. I know... Even like people in our generation, 
and the Gen X, you know, people here know there's a problem, right? And we're, yeah. we're seeking a solution for the most part. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't. Right. And that's fine, you know, but for the people who come here to feel free, they're usually coming to learn something, be inspired or laugh, right? right? So what I would like to say is we're very athletic people, right? We've also been blessed with a good metabolism, yeah. right? Um, but I'll tell you that between the fall of 2022 and the fall of 2023, almost like a 13, 14 month span, I wasn't doing too hot. Mm -hmm. And there were large spans of time, sometimes like four or five months where I wasn't working out. I wasn't eating right. right. I wasn't doing anything physically active. The only walks I was going on, I was going on walks, but that was only to smoke. Yeah. Right. So that's right. one saving grace, I guess, yeah. you know, but I'm eating like shit. I'm scrolling my phone. I'm doing a whole bunch of stupid ass shit and I'm depressed and I'm down. I'm not going to the gym. Right. And then in September after our, our kitten passed away, I didn't feel like going to the gym, mm -hmm. right? I didn't feel like looking at people. I was ashamed of myself. I didn't have any self-esteem, yeah. right? So I told myself, I'm like, if we're not going to hoop and we're not going to lift weights, we are going to do push-ups here. We're going to do push-ups and sit-ups, mm -hmm. right? Something. I don't even care if it's only 100 a day, right? And I just got in the habit of getting my body moving again, right. which I know at the start of your journey – you gave up like drinking and smoking for that that bet to run the mile right and you started training that month leading up to the mile and you're like holy shit i'm super out of shape right, right. but you you got in the habit of just going out there and sweating absolutely just doing it you know just pushing through it like it's it's tough it hurts it's not fun in the moment right <laughs> But it's also like extremely rewarding, right? Like for me, I love just pushing myself to the absolute limit of like my physical limits and stuff like that, right? I always loved that growing up. So kind of venturing back into that, it's like, yes, like this is what I'm looking for, right? Like this is what I want. And, um, you know, to kind of piggyback off what you were just saying, it's like it's really hard when shit starts going south in your life to like continue to, um, you know, exemplify the life you were you were leading before right um whether that's like getting to into the gym on a consistent basis um you know eating the the right foods all the time like when like shit starts going south it's really hard to like continue to like still stay the course um and i think you still have to have that grace with yourself and understand that like it's okay like it's all right but it's like instead of just like giving yourself a cop out and just being like whatever i'm just like depressed i don't feel like doing this shit like you know this this and this is going on like you know i just had like my kitten die like i feel like ass um it's like let's just sit here and ponder and think about it and really try and understand it and learn from it right like i think that like the biggest thing you can do whether you're either injured you're hurt or you're just depressed or you don't feel right is like instead of like wallowing in your own self-pity it's like like this is a learning process to understand like the inner mechanics of like my own mind and body and like how i deal and rationalize and internalize it and then moving forward i can utilize that to to like um, get back on the horse a lot quicker. Right. So it's like, maybe it would take me like two weeks to get back to my routine of getting to the gym when like shit started going south in my life. And through that two weeks, I really was taking stock and starting to understand and learn what that process looked like for myself. And like, Oh, okay. Like, man, I just like, can't get over the hump because like, that depressed feeling I have, like it just makes me not want to like work out or do any of like the stuff that really actually makes me feel better and can actually pull you out of that depression, right? Right. Um, so it's like next time it happens, maybe it's not two weeks, maybe like now that you've recognized it and you actually were able to like reflect on it, like it's not two weeks, now it's only one week and you got to reflect on it over that one week, that depressed state you were in, you're starting to reflect and like, man, I'm conscious of being depressed and in a bad state and I'm conscious of not being able to eat healthy and work out consistently. Um, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, next time something happens in your life and you, maybe you're in a more depressed or like not feeling like working out state, you recognize it sooner 
And it's like, man, now instead of a week of it, it was only one day. Right. right. And it's like, I think that's the biggest thing is like learning how you, you work and respond to that and like giving yourself the grace necessary to like not beat yourself up over it. But it's like, man, we you, you have to use those experiences and like those mishaps to like truly learn and, and improve and understand how you can you shorten the gap to get back to that consistent discipline that you set up. Because at the end of the day, it's like shit's going to go wrong in everybody's life and you're going to have points of depression and points of sadness or not feeling like doing things but it's like you're always going to like fall back to your baseline level of habits right you're always going to fall back to like what are those like innate baseline habits that are super ingrained in you and a lot of the time it's like habits that are anti-patterns or negative habits right because like those stick a lot harder than you know the really positive like influential ones in our life so it's like being able to like recognize that and, and change that too is, is, is really important. Yeah. Being aware of that. Right. You being just that. like, you know, self-aware of it is huge. It's, it's something you have to train yourself to do too. And it's yeah. something that I've gotten better at in the last year and a half too, because, you know, during the first few years of my sobriety, I didn't have like a bunch of terrible things go wrong. And then in the last year and a half, my recovery was tested, you know, yeah. I'm still sober to this day, and that's one thing I will always be grateful of. But right. my, my recovery was tested in terms of how I viewed physical wellness and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now as as things come up in my life that are shitty, right, I give myself a grace period to be human, mm -hmm. feel emotion, right. not beat myself up about it. Like, So Thursday I, or Wednesday, I re-rolled my ankle, right? Mm -hmm. And... Lisa actually took my car to class that night. I don't know what it is, but every time Lisa takes my car and drops me at the gym to hoop, I roll my fucking yeah. shit, you know? It's like your body knows, oh, we don't have a car to get home. Now right. we got to wait for our ride. You're going to sit here with your rolled ass ankle. No, I actually, I was so depressed about it. I called a lift. Nice. I got a lift home and I told her, I got her on the phone. I'm icing my leg and I'm like, yeah, when you're getting home, I'm, I'm pretty down right now. No. And I'm going to go to Jewel and get a ta like a pint of Ben and Jerry's and I'm going to watch <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. And that's what I did, you know. All right. And uh, I was really sad about it. And being able to adapt and change up, I'm like, all right, we just rolled it a month ago and we stayed really consistent with our working out. Right. Right. I got to change. I got to adapt. All right. I'm not going to get fucking sad. All mm -hmm. right. This shit happens. Right. I, what was it? Thursday. I did a chest day, so I did like 300 push-ups and then 30 minutes of other chest exercises with dumbbells mm -hmm. that I have at my apartment. Right. And then yesterday I did a leg day and sauna day. So, and today I'm going to be doing abs, right? The old me would have not have done anything these three days, yeah. right? The old me would have let this drag on for a week or three weeks or a month, right? right? And just hold up and been all sad and shit, you know? Yeah. So... Being able to take a step back, that perspective, like, hey, shit happens. Mm -hmm. Change your routine. You know, you had your ice cream, all right? You know? You, you got you got your your guilty pleasure in. Like, exactly. Right? You know, yeah. let's get back to it. You know, I had a really healthy breakfast, eggs today with fruit, you know? Right. Um, it's being able to, like you said, shorten that gap in between the shitty periods and to yeah. get back on your, right. your routine. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is just consciously taking stock and reflecting and having that self-awareness to, to pull yourself out of it and understand what some of those, those gaps are. Um, but one thing I did want to also bring up too, that you had mentioned with the sauna, right? As if you're somebody, especially, um, keen into working out and trying to build some muscle, like highly recommend getting some sauna sessions in. Um, there's I think in so general much, though too, you know, like in general, it's super absolutely. good for your heart health yeah. also. I mean, it's like I was saying more like, you know, for the muscle, like lifting and stuff because, um, you know, there's so much research out there that shows like three, three days plus a week in the sauna, the uh, human growth hormone increases in the body like tremendously, right? So huge for muscle growth, but um also the heat shock proteins and everything like it's just amazing for everybody like i would recommend everybody to to get in the sauna multiple times a week it's just like that and cold plunges like you're never gonna you're not gonna be able to like shock your body like that like that quickly right and it's like 
the, the benefits of, of the sauna, it's like, man, like just look at the elevated heart rate that you're getting and, and that amount of sweat, like you, the amount of like working out you have to do to like increase that. So it's like the stress that it puts on the body. Um, just like next to nothing it's so hard to to get that anywhere else so i would you know highly recommend the sauna sessions and the cold plunges start incorporating those into the routine i just started doing the sauna like this year yeah and i had oh i had made an excuse you know about it so like everybody here on this planet uh i we we make excuses for why we don't do things that are good for us right you know and start to rationalize well like you know i I do understand the importance of this, but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> not now. Yeah. Not today. Maybe later. Right. And I was rationalizing it for a long time because the one LA Fitness I go to doesn't have the sauna. The one that does have the sauna is a 20 minute drive. Right. You know, and I started, you know, making that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to go there at least once or twice a week. I got to right. hit the sauna and I've been doing that for the year of 2024 now. And I just, I feel fucking great aside from like the consistent workout to like being in the sauna for at least 20 minutes. And that one's hot as fuck too. Yeah. That one gets hot, right. but it, it feels good. Um, so I think to recap, I don't think we're going to be done with the episode, but just to recap some things for the listeners out there, find a few small things to change about your your eating habits and your workout cut habits. Cut out the processed food for sure. Yes, cut as out as much as possible. Yeah, the processed food, like like we were saying earlier, the eighty twenty rule. Right. Trying to eat healthy eighty percent of the time. Yeah. And you can go off the rails the other twenty. You yeah. know, fuck it. Right. But just make sure you hit that eighty and get in the get in the process of knowing what you're putting into your body. Yeah. More whole foods, less processed foods. And get active a few times a week. Right. Honestly, if you're really out of shape and you don't know where to start, just start with going on a few fucking walks a week. Yeah. Just start with a walk. And then honestly, after that, just try doing body weight exercises. Yeah, body weight exercises is huge. Squats, uh, push-ups, pull-ups, stuff like that, right? Um, even lunges, getting some lunges, some split leg squat lunging. In, um, try planks too. Planks, planks even, some side planks. Um you can even get like a little medicine ball for yourself and do a lot of ab workout stuff with medicine balls, even kettlebells, right? Like there's so much like stuff that you could do even at your house, like order these small little weight things and like, you know, even a few dumbbells, um, stuff like that. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have like the necessary equipment now to like really do my body justice. Maybe even like a Pilates type workout would be right for you. Right. And there's so many of that stuff on YouTube. You could just look up, right? Which is really cool. Um, so I think that's important. And then just to kind of hammer home and talk about like the whole foods, right? Like getting good natural whole foods. Shout out to Whole Foods too. Shout out. It's really expensive though. Um, is Sponsor like, us. I'm just fucking yeah. <laughs> um, I would say like for me, I kind of walk through like the majority of my diet really quick. It's like, okay, so... I like to break things down by the macro. So we'll start with protein, right? Protein, mainly um, beef, right? In the form of ground beef, like to do like 80, 20, because there's some really good saturated fat in there and no like saturated fat and the fat from beef, it's not bad for you. It's a lie, it's a scam. It's amazing, <laughs> right? So do the research, like it does not call, cause heart disease. Like maybe the seed oils that it's cooked in could cause it, but um, across the board, a lot of the medical uh, communities starting to to really understand, like, yeah, it's not the not the red meat that's causing this heart disease. So uh, that's main protein. I'll also maybe do some like really clean turkey too, which is pretty quick. But uh, yeah, mainly beef. So ground beef, steaks, um, and then I will also incorporate a lot of organs. Highly recommend organs. You can get them online too. Uh, like beef liver, uh, heart is really good. Heart tastes just like steak too. So don't be too scared of heart. It also has a really important enzyme, the CoQ12. So highly recommend heart, um, kidney, 
I do a lot of bone marrow too. Bone marrow is amazing, super fatty, and it just like tastes like straight butter. It's it's great. So and then uh, some good like collagen as well, which I'll kind of heat up on the stove and, and drink it hot, almost like a cup of coffee type thing, right? So those are like a lot of the protein source there. And then also some good pasture raised eggs. If you're gonna get eggs, I would definitely highly recommend the pasture raised because. Uh, pasture raised is like they have to be on a certain i forgot how many acres of land it is but they pretty much have free reign to roam which is nice you don't want like uh, cage free because cage free means they only have like the small little enclosed area it's kind of bullshit to be honest but yeah definitely look for organic pasture raised eggs if you're going to go eggs so i'll usually do three to four eggs a day on top of that and then for the carbs we'll switch into going more um start with like some some dairy so i like to do a lot of kefir like once a day i'll have a a glass of kefir which um has some good protein fat and carbs in it right and i'll mix that in with some honey um preferably glyphosate free honey glyphosate's found in so much of the honey nowadays that trying to find a company with glyphosate free is super important just with all the uh, negative aspects that um, has, has, has start to come to light with, uh, with glyphosate. So glyphosate free honey and, uh, we'll go with, um, some fruit. So bananas, I'll usually like fresh squeeze like two oranges a day. Now I've started to incorporate the, my juicer, uh, cherries, mangoes, and uh, a ton of salt, make a little kefir smoothie with something like that. That's a lot of the carb intake uh, during like workouts and stuff. I like coconut water. It's just super clean, feels good. So um, that's that's kind of the carb intake. And then the fat pretty much comes from like the eggs, the beef, and then I'll usually do like an avocado a day. Um, so for like me, that's kind of like my 80%, right? Like really trying to like slowly transition to getting fully 100%, like sticking to it, right? But I mean, you were at 100% for a, for a good a while. while. Yeah, a while, then slipped yeah. up a little, right? Started to like incorporate some other stuff and um, mess around with some things. But uh, yeah, I would say like that's kind of like my like overall, you know, perfect world in terms of like what's going into my body and you can even incorporate some like rod like dairy cheese type stuff too i've actually started to venture into the cheese things much as i like hate hate cheese so got some (laughs) got some raw cheese in the fridge right now that we're uh we're testing out so really good for the microbiome um yeah yeah the bacteria yeah yeah um i can't say that mine diet on a weekly basis is as uh planned out as that I do eat a lot of beef, like my meal preps are beef and I eat rice um, a lot. Okay. I also eat a lot of fruit, uh, salmon. Salmon's really big on, yeah. on my weekly diet. We only drink, also for people out there, like we don't drink pop. Yeah, cut yeah. the pop and yeah. shit out. God, the fucking soda is yeah. so bad. Even like juice, if you're not like freshly juicing it, probably don't buy it because it's probably just got a ton of like added sugar in it. Right. I think sometimes if I don't have the the time or if I'm out of certain materials at my place, I will buy like a muscle milk after a workout. That's kind of the only thing that I drink outside of just water, coffee, and tea. Yeah. So water, coffee, and tea. We are pretty big on the carbonated water, you know. Got it right here. Yeah, whenever you need a little pop, you yeah. know. But just a little uh, sparkling water always does the trick. Yeah, nothing like super processed, like sugar and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, I I do I still fast a lot because I just don't eat in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get all my calories in between like twelve and twelve and eight. Mm-hmm. Twelve PM to eight PM is when I do all my eating. Yeah. Um I do like oatmeal a lot too. But uh how do you like the liver? I heard you ventured into the, the organ meats. Yeah. Let me let me tell you something because <laughs> we'll probably make this a real. I'm gonna be honest. This whole liver thing fucking ass yeah it doesn't taste too good god it tastes terrible i was gonna bring some today but oh my I god slipped my mind. Look, the, the whole here's the thing the purpose over pleasure i get it i have done done it like three or four times at this point it just so happens i get hurt so i'm not even able to like work out as hard as i yeah. want to and repair myself i can i can tell that between doing the liver the sauna 
changing my sleeping habits and and all this stuff like these are all great things to do but the liver taste terrible yeah don't listen to any fucking influencer anywhere when they uh, fucking talk it up like it's right. fucking great tastes like shit yeah you know i think aiden makes smoothies he makes like these yeah you can make a, a good organ smoothie yeah. yeah i think the best thing to do like you said like i chop chop it up and then i just swallow it yeah that's what i do i usually will just kind of chase it with um like some coconut water and it yeah like just kind of goes right down the hatchet but uh you know i think when you like do some research anyone out there on um beef liver and just like you'll be kind of amazed at just pound for pound how it's like wow this is the most nutritious item in the world right here beef liver like you just like can't you can't beat it just like there's like the misconception though like because eric said the same thing that tom said like you're just eating the thing that filters all the shit out of the body yeah you know but i don't think that the liver keeps that yeah, it's like you're literally like contradicting yourself. Like the thing that filters all the, it's like so, it literally filters it, right? Like gets rid of yeah. that stuff, you know? Yeah, you get rid of it. Yeah. You know, it's not like the liver just holds on to all the fucking nasty All the pathogens. Sh- and yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure there might be some, but I don't know. I think like, like but, it's, but it neutralizes you know, some of them. Yeah, dude. exactly. Yeah, right. Due to the enzymes and the bacteria yeah. that the liver holds. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't put too much weight into it. Just like, no. Yeah. I don't really, and this is just kind of where I'm at. I don't like taking like advice from people who aren't healthy. Yeah, or like <laughs> aren't like actually embodying and living the stuff that they're talking, talking about. about right? yeah. You know, yeah. So totally feel feel you there. But um, yeah, just outside of that of what you know, we kind of currently eat. It's like that. That's just like more of a snapshot in, um, into it. But it's like just know that that's like. I don't think there's one like ideal diet out there no. where it's like, you know, like human bodies are just so dynamic and different. And there's um, like so much like growing up in the like the way the body actually changes and like like the mental side of things too, how you actually like internalize and like think about the food that you're eating. So like this is what I found that like I feel the best and most like, you know, energized and fulfilled with the way you know i eat um but it might not be for you so i would say like try different things out don't don't just like you know keep doing what you're doing but like it's not experiment with things and like how do i actually feel after eating this what is my mental state like how do i actually like interact with people when i'm you know eating these types of foods right so i think that's that's one of um the most important things that I've really started to like understand over the f- past few years is this is like a big ex- like experiment of like okay this is how I feel eating this this is how I feel eating this right and like maybe I shouldn't be eating this like processed like cake or whatever because I feel way better when I'm eating this beef right? right so I think it's trial and error but also for people that don't have the knowledge and that don't know where to look Pro, like properly do your own research and stuff like that. I do think that possibly hiring like a nutritionist. Oh yeah. Or I would say this: if you have every, I I believe that people have like friends in their life in their right. lives that are in shape and are eating well. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a friend in your life who is doing well physically, like yeah. in terms of their food and workout, I think you should go find some. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, being around the people that will influence you is good you know like for for brandon brandon has worked really well with counting his macros Mm -hmm. he holds himself accountable to that that works for him right right he probably has specific foods that he eats every week and meal preps and stuff like that but what keeps him accountable is counting everything out yeah that doesn't really vibe with me right you know whatever if counting everything out works for you i say do it if zero to a hundred cutting out all pleasure eating works for you do yeah. it you know it's trial and error but don't right. don't give up you know yeah. and like we were saying earlier like you started running to jump start your habit of changing your entire life right you found one one exercise that you based the rest of everything you did around right yeah. and when i got sober that was basketball for me Right. I just happen to get hurt more playing basketball than you get hurt doing running. Right. right? So, but finding 
one exercise or activity that you just love doing Mm -hmm. and then just doing that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Like maybe it's like playing volleyball or, you know, just doing something outside in nature with friends. Right. Like whatever that is that like really like toggles your interest, like you just go for it and do it and just like, you'll, you'll never look back, you know? Like, I think just going at things with like childlike curiosity is so important. Like, man like just like man how do i like get so stuck in my ways as an adult where it's like man i only (laughs) like this i only do this like this 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 so it's like i love like learning new games or just like you know trying new things out like man it's like one of the most like energizing and cool things is like how do i acquire more knowledge or develop a new skill set in something you know well we get beaten down as adults yeah and then we're just like i'm only going to do what's comfortable to me right what i know yeah. i know i'm going to feel this way after doing this and i'm going to keep doing yeah. this right because right. the unknown is a scary concept right it is. if you view it as a scary concept yeah. otherwise you can view it as something exciting right you know venturing into the world of changing your life for the better is a scary fucking thing it is. especially if you don't know what you're doing yeah you know so if there's anything that i'd like people to take away from this episode in particular it would be really watch what you're eating mm-hmm. watch how much you're eating yeah. and really take a inventory of how active you were in the last seven days. Right. You know, honestly, ask yourself if you even sweat. Yeah. Some people just don't like sweating anymore. Just right. Like, ah, I feel grimy. Yeah. You know? It's like, dude, we're, we're, we're humans. Yeah. Though. It's a natural like response to the body. Right. So it's like, just try and exercise more wherever you are in your journey. Like whether you're just starting, you're in the thickets of it you're just like in a good groove just try and do a little bit more and see what that feels like like it's it's really powerful just a little bit more push your limits yeah so i think we had a pretty pretty good episode do you have anything else did you want to touch on i actually wanted to ask you because in this last like year you've been hurt a few times yeah and then also you got covid yeah, COVID too. really did the number on me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Second time I've had it. Um, first time, it was like it was nothing. I was pretty much asymptomatic. Just took a week off of running and was pretty much back at it, you know. Um, and just in terms of like inner, in, injuries and um, dealing with that, it's, it's a really, like we talked about, tough thing. Like get kind of a little bit depressed, down on yourself um like this woe is me type feeling but like i said i think just like understanding what those pain points are for you and understanding how can i quickly like like bounce back from this and like learn from it so i'm conscious of it so when you know something like it happens again i'm able to to not be as depressed or down on myself right and instead i can use that injury time to to really focus and sharpen my own mental edge my mental you know um fortitude plus there's a lot of stuff you can do well injured that you know to stay in shape like in running you could do a stationary bike or something like that right so um but yeah talking about the covid so yeah i got covid like first week of december so that's what four months ago right it was brutal like i've never been that sick before man it fucking knocked me out um yeah it was bad I don't know how the heck it hit me so hard, but uh, yeah, I was pretty much out for like two weeks. Just this piercing headache all day long, like just wouldn't go away. Uh, Some chest pain, right? Like, you know, the whole nine yards. And week three comes along and I'm finally like on the tail end of it and like starting to recover, feel a lot better. Pretty much didn't start running again until week four. And uh, just did like very low energy, just like kind of chest painy, right? Not feeling great. That lingered pretty much into like late February, early March, right? Fuck. Yeah. And like just struggle to get through workouts, absolute struggle. And then I have everybody asking me, how's running going? How are you doing? Like, how's this? And like inside, I'm just dying. I'm like, it's fine. Like, fuck me. Fuck me. (laughs) You know, like, I don't want to talk about this shit. Like, I'm freaking out right now because I might like be like, I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, Um, that 
couple months stretch was just such a struggle and brutal like realization that like man like maybe i just like this is this is what my body is now like it's permanently like this and i'm like wait like i can't think like that that's fucked like our bodies are so like like fluid and, and can change right and it's like if you think about it as like concrete then like you're you're fucked you know so I, i'm like i can't think like that well, like i can get back to where i was like pre-covid like for sure you know it's gonna take a little bit of time but i'm there so um the last month has been great like definitely feel like um we're like almost there you know still have slight like like some slight chest pain and um you know on the longer runs but uh for the most part it's like you know we're we could i could feel like these next couple of weeks um i'm gonna be back nice. I'm back and ready so i'm looking to race um in either early or mid may is, is the goal right now so yeah really excited like i said to just be back i think um you know for me it's like fuck you hate talking about it like but at the same time it's like man like like i'm just like happy like i'm just so happy right now you yeah. know like i'm finally like back to it i'm finally like able to talk about it because like i could see the light at the end of the tunnel now i could see like yeah i'm like right there i'm finally like back to where i was so i could tell that you didn't want you know, to talk about it during those months yeah I, you know i kept bugging you yeah <laughs> you were like everybody's bugging me and it's just like man i just want to deflect this shit because it's like i'm freaking out you know so yeah no it feels great though it that's because in the moment despair yeah fuck dude. yeah once it grabs hold of you it's like, hard to like it's hard to get out of its grasp man like when we were talking about the whole like first part of the episode was very like positive when we we're like gotta take a step back perspective and all right. that shit but like right when you start to be really transparent about it like in those moments of like despair right. and anguish and shit like that like it's fucking tough it is it really is and it tests every amount of your will and you're just like own like discipline and understanding of like what you truly want to accomplish in life and, and with what you're doing and it's like man if you want to truly aspire to do like great things it's like you're gonna go through these these hard times and it's like how you respond to them and how you learn from them and are able to like utilize them to propel you forward and to refine your own skill and your own knowledge of being the best version of yourself that you can potentially and possibly be it's like you've got to be able to work through that and it fucking sucks you know it sucks like literally like trying to like run and work out every day and not know like man i don't think i'll ever be able to like break a four minute mile or i'll ever be able to get back to the fitness i was in even a year ago like it's just like not there i'm not having it i don't know what to fucking do right so yeah, just being able to like kind of filter those negative thoughts out and those fearful thoughts and those like doubtful thoughts and, and really just turn them around and understand that like um, it's like the body and mind's natural response to when you aren't getting the results and the desired expectations of what you're, you know, set out to achieve. Like, sure, those fearful and doubtful thoughts are going to pop in, but um I think you have to also like be able to think with the rational side of your brain and be like, okay, like I'm just not there yet. That's okay. Like we just got to stick to it. We got to keep at it. Like, you know, if, if we can't get back there after like a full year, then maybe, maybe we're, we're fucked. But, um, you know, you've got to have that grace with yourself, like I said, and, and understand that those thoughts are just the natural response to not, you know, kind of hitting those desired results and expectations but yeah i think being like a little lenient with yourself yeah like because in the moment you want to like take those fears and the thoughts and you want to make them almost like concrete right you're like uh, these are like set in stone these yeah. fears right and because you don't have the answers right right you don't have the answers so you're worrying about it yeah but i think like solidifying those fears are trying to gives us a little like sense of comfort right because we get our answer right yeah but that answer makes us depressed yeah so i think going through the motions and being a little more lenient with ourselves and like you said like you got to cut yourself some slack at that point and now right. you're back to almost back to where you want to be right you know last month's been good you're like man one more month and i'm gonna be right back there again yeah you know the body's the body is able to bounce back better than we give it credit for yeah you know but the proper 
rest and exercise and, and food we put into it is is key mm-hmm. right absolutely 100 percent. honestly yeah i think that was a pretty good episode uh, yeah man it's and, nice to be back on it's been a little minute so. I was, yeah i was gonna say yeah. you haven't been in the new studio yet right yeah, yeah it's nice i like it yeah it's pretty dope sweet setup man um, yeah thanks um but we're gonna leave it at that you know so telling people to watch what you eat be conscious of that get a few good healthy physical routines in place and uh yeah chase your motherfucking dreams so with that y'all know the drill stay up feel free peace Thank you.